grocery store, what comes to your mind first? Maybe some chewing gum or maybe some tapes in the stationery section? Well, to your surprise guys, prices can also be sticky. Yes, that's right and that's the topic for today. Hello and welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics. My name is Vidhi Kalra Balana and today's topic is Sticky Price Model also known as the Menu Cost Model which is a very interesting macroeconomic concept guys which I'll be discussing with you all in today's video. I'll be discussing the definition, some very interesting examples of this topic and also its macroeconomic implication along with it wages being sticky yes wages can also be sticky guys so stay tuned and watch out this video and also guys don't forget to like this video and do hit that bell icon and do subscribe to my channel and show your support and also follow me on my instagram and which is called five minute economics as well for some interesting content so firstly guys coming to the introduction of this very interesting model so firstly guys you should very clearly know that this sticky price model actually comes under the new Keynesian macroeconomic theory uh, model and basically uh, when we study this concept we are studying a part of the new Keynesian macroeconomic theory okay now what are sticky prices now what is something sticky guys very simple just if you think sticky is something which takes time to get rid of you know that uh, very quick if you just touch it also it will be very sticky and very long to get rid of it and that's where the, our economists got the word sticky from sticky prices means some prices which are difficult to get rid of prices which cannot be changed very easily and it takes very long to change them so that is basically sticky prices so very literal meaning just something which you will never forget i believe so prices cannot be changed easily as i've already written to it guys why why uh, do we face a sticky prices concept because of three reasons one there are fixed contracts two menu costs which i'll be just explaining to you three which are price wars under oligopoly i've also made a video of this you can check out that video i'll attach its description in the link below so these are the reasons due to which we face the sticky price theory or model whatever you could call it so basically what happens are now, before I go ahead, let me explain to you the concept of menu cost, which is why sticky prices are also known as menu cost. Now, suppose guys, we go to a restaurant and due to some reasons, they have to change the pricing. When they change the pricing, guys, they have to change the menu, right? The menu has to change with new prices. So that cost which they have to face in changing the menu, so literally, it's called the menu cost. So that is why they don't wish to change the prices that easily. Okay, at times you must have seen also guys, um, I just uh, hit my mind like when we go to the menu and two, three prices are changed, they don't print a whole new menu, right? They just, you know, just uh, cut it or put a little tape on it. They don't uh, spend that money to again print a whole new menu for some set, little changes, right? So now guys, I'll give you a very, very interesting example after which you'll be crystal clear with this concept. Now, supposingly, guys, uh, there is a restaurant in uh, in the peak area of uh, where offices are. Like, let's take a classic example of our cyber hub. Cyber hub is surrounded with lots of offices and, you know, there are many restaurants. Now, many people come to the restaurants and restaurants are doing well. But due to, you know, COVID coming in, uh, we've seen that many offices have switched to the hybrid mode of working, that is work from home for a few days and you know uh, working in the office for a few days and some offices have actually gone to a full uh, work from home model as well because they have discovered that can also be possible now due to that reason there will be far less of people coming to the restaurant because now many people are working from the home right so due to which what will the restaurant face they will face a negative demand shock of course there will be a fall in the demand suddenly because lesser people are coming to the restaurant now what can the restaurant owner do uh, of course you will say that it can change the prices you know to attract more people it will lower the prices but it wouldn't lower the prices because you know changing the prices are not that easy prices are sticky they will face that menu cost and due to which the price doesn't change but we will notice that there will be less quantity demanded for its food and that is what sticky prices are when prices cannot change easily and quickly so I hope you're clear with this concept. So now coming to the bigger picture, the macroeconomic implication of these simple sticky prices. Now what happens guys, because of sticky prices, now 
As we said that because they are not changing the prices, they definitely have to reduce their production level and instead of dropping prices, which will respond to a negative demand shock. See, well, they could have done one thing, they could have just changed their prices, but they couldn't change the prices because of menu costs and other costs also and because of other reasons which I explained to you earlier. Due to which now because they are not earning that much, so they have to cut down on their production level, which basically means that cutting production down level will be by reducing the number of people or maybe reducing their work hours. Now in that restaurant example, not many people are coming to the restaurant, so we don't need so many waiters hovering around. We will just tell some waiters to, you know, like we, we will fire them. Obviously, so the left ones also, we can have them on hourly basis when there is more rush in the restaurant. Due to which now those people now have lesser income, those waiters, probably those who have been fired, their production level will fall because their income has fallen, which will basically reduce the aggregate demand in the economy. Why guys? Because those people have less income now, those waiters who have been laid off now, you know, lesser purchasing power, lesser aggregate demand and which affect the other firms because from those whom they are purchasing and which will further downstream the supply chain. So overall that sticky prices will lead to, you know, uh, layering off or laying off of people which basically would mean that they are no, no more you know employed their demand is reduced a reduction in overall demand which basically worsens this initial supply shock and leads to recession so you can see how we move from sticky prices to recession this is the big picture this is the macroeconomic implication of this topic so coming to demand shock and inventory so basically how do firms deal with these demand shocks which suddenly happen so Keeping an inventory base can definitely be a solution to it, but not a permanent solution, but definitely a temporary solution to the problem. Now, firms try their best to predict the future plans and, you know, uh, their productions are then planned accordingly, but always, you know, how they plan, things don't go that way. And now, like COVID wasn't anything which was planned by anyone, I believe. So, you know, productions can change due to X, Y, Z reasons. Firms keep inventories to deal with the unexpected changes in demand. Now, keeping an inventory warehouse, you know, like I hope all of you know what an inventory is. Basically, in a warehouse, you keep your extra products, like a good down, basically. So, if, you know, the demand falls due to some reason, we can definitely stack up more in the inventory and uh, remove the goods when, till the time, you know, demand is back in the market. And again, we can then we are reduce the inventory and get them out from our warehouse, go down and be, you know, in the market. So that is one thing, you know, keeping an inventory, we can put excess goods, we can even, you know, take out goods when the market rises suddenly. So that is a solution to the problem. But actually, guys, you know, inventory basically deals with the changes without changing the production plans. That's what I said very initially. And with the help of inventory, we don't have to suddenly change our production plan. But as I told you in the very beginning, it is just a temporary solution and not a permanent one. So when you, you know, if the demand has changed for a very long period till how long will you keep the inventory you have to eventually uh, you know lay off your workers if there is a permanent recession in the market so this is just like a short term thing you can do rather than laying off people you can you know uh, stack up goods but then if it persists for long you definitely have to lay off people and their recession, recession will persist so lastly guys coming to the concept of wage stickiness so as I explained you, price stickiness, we also have wage stickiness, similar to price stickiness where the prices cannot change easily, we have wage stickiness. Basically this concept was given by J.M. Keynes as I told you uh, very initially, this is uh, coming under the new Keynesian model. Uh, together if we talk about wage and price stickiness, it's called the normal rigidity concept. Rigid as you mean something which cannot be changed easily. Prices and wages both come under this concept. We've already studied what are price stickiness, so I'm not going there. But let's talk about wage stickiness or also commonly known as wage rigidity. So sometimes guys, it's said that, you know, if there is some issue, you know, there a fall in the aggregate demand or due to X, Y, Z reason, the, your good is not being supplied in the market, you can cut off your, uh, you know, your wages of your uh, employees, you know, salary come kardo, that is the best solution they give. Salary kam kardo ke kharcha kam ho jayega, company bach jayegi. But do you think that it is that easy to cut on wages? Well, no guys. Cutting wages is definitely a very difficult pro uh, problem actually. And as simple as it might seem that cut down the wages of the people, it isn't that easy because, you know, uh, the workers show a resistance 
we nowadays in our modern day world we have our labor unions they are very strong and they don't let the workers suffer at all so the wages cannot be cut so in that case what happens guys uh, businesses can maybe cut down on other areas like raw materials or but definitely not cutting the wages of their employees and also they can do one more thing uh, that they can you know lay off less productive workers rather than reducing the salary of all the people and demotivating everyone the less productive workers who are not working efficiently can be removed while the others the wages can be the same and not reduced so this is the concept of wage rigidity uh, guys i hope you are clear with this uh, very interesting model or topic whatever you can call it and thank you so much guys for watching this video i'll see you in the next video pretty soon